I didn't know there was a Top Cat movie until just now. I'm nine years behind. This was released in 2012 in the UK, originally released in 2011. And as you can imagine, this is a feature length version of the Top Cat animations. I grew up loving Top Cat. Weirdly though, I don't remember too much about it. But I thought I'd give this a watch to see if I could trigger any nostalgia. And I actually didn't, I didn't expect to be quite so emotionally invested in the narrative. Very unnervingly surprised by that. It's not the greatest film. It's marketed as a family film, but I think it's more of a children's film. But there is one thing that happens in the narrative, and I'm not going to go into too much detail. I don't want to spoil anything. But I did just kind of think, how are they going to get out of this situation? And I was genuinely interested in how they were going to resolve this problem. So even though I think largely in terms of the humour, it's better for children rather than a full family, there is something there to keep you engaged. So it's directed by Alberto Marr, uh, written by Timothy McKean and Kevin Secchia or Sasia. I, I apologise if I've mispronounced that. I'm sure I have. And a pretty great voice cast as well. Jason Harris voices Top Cat and about 10 billion other characters. And definitely worth checking out the voice cast list. There are quite a few names that I recognise there. Some um, pretty prominent ones as well. And basically it is like, an, it does feel like an extended episode rather than a feature length film. For example, the Tom and Jerry movie is a feature length film. It doesn't feel like an extension of an episode. This one actually does just feel like somebody stretched out a cartoon. So this revolves around Officer Dibble who thinks he's going to get a promotion, but actually it turns out that the Chief's son-in-law, I believe was the relationship, has been given the job instead and he is the antithesis of a police chief. And he starts creating all these problems and suddenly Top Cat finds himself in a very difficult situation. And we don't know how he's going to get out of this situation. And genuinely, I couldn't work out how they were going to get out of it. So I was kind of really intrigued to see what would happen. So in terms of the narrative, it's actually pretty... I mean, I say it's pretty interesting. I w it's more interesting than I expected. It's not the most gripping narrative ever. But I think, you know, hopefully, it's something that young children will find engaging because their beloved Top Cat character is in this really awful situation and the resolution is not immediately apparent. And I think the way that it develops is pretty engaging. You know, you get some kids' films like this where you know, the way it's resolved is pretty obvious within the first, like, five minutes after the incident. And that's definitely not the case with Top Cat. So I was really, really pleasantly surprised at the narrative, and I think that it was developed really well. All of the characters that we know and love from Top Cat are in this. Top Cat himself has always been brilliant. I never realised how much of a bad role model Top Cat actually was until just now. Um, and Benny. I mean, Benny, I've always loved Benny. Benny's definitely one of my favourite characters. The animation quality, thank goodness, is very much like it is in the cartoons. I'm looking at the poster design for it just now, and the poster design makes it look a lot more kind of CGI than it actually is, but it is beautiful animation that's very much reflective of the episodes. Maybe slightly enhanced. But there is kind of a weird... Like the backgrounds, the scenery, um, particularly apparent when they're playing pool. There's like a two second clip when some of the cats are playing a game of pool or snooker. I don't know the difference. And it just looks slightly indifferent. It's like these animations have been, the animated cats have been superimposed onto a slightly more realistic image. So it's a bit jarring at times, but for the most part, it's really, really quite pleasant and, and easy on the eye. Very bright, vibrant colours. Children will love that. There's some nice music in this and I think the characters are true to the characters we know them as in the TV show. So it does feel like a feature length version rather than like a kind of spin off where things are a bit different. I IMDb overall rating is 4.7 out of 10, which obviously isn't great, but I wasn't I wasn't expecting this to be a 10 out of 10. In Complete honesty, I don't know who the target audience is because it's 
nostalgic, but not in the way that films like um, you know Garfield or Tom and Jerry, the the more recent Tom and Jerry film are. They're nostalgic, but a lot more complex and family friendly. This one is nostalgic if you grew up watching Top Cat, but it's not as engaging as it could be. I'm not sure if today's gener- youngest generation is a big fan of Top Cat. I'm not really sure. Granted, this was 2011-2012. But either way, I was more impressed with it than I thought I was going to be. If you like Top Cat growing up, I'd say give it a watch. It's cute, it's good fun. The narrative's better than expected. Ultimately, I can't really complain.